Welcome to this look at a new mod map on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. This is the Angevin countryside. This is by Farmer Angevin. 412.55 megabytes download. It's the jury's out for me on this one. I'm really conflicted. The map itself is really nice. The terrain's great. The um, the, the texture in the colour palette. It's all really, really nice. But there are a few things wrong with it. I'll be, you know, I'll be honest. There are a few things I think. I don't know. You'll see as we go around. I'll explain. I, I don't. People that watch my reviews and stuff know I don't like to be cruel and horrible. But I will point out things that are glaringly obvious because I can't hide them. As I go around, people say, oh, you never mentioned this, or there's this wrong with it, or that wrong with it. I can't lie about it. Now, whilst you start here at this house, this is not the sleep trigger. Very nice. It's, you know, There are some modded buildings on here, some pens and barns and things like that, which, I'll be honest, does drive the slot count up quite a bit on console. Let's check the map. Where do we actually start? It's going that way. So, this is the map. Bottom left, we've got a bit of a key. So we've got farm, uh, well, dairy farm one, dairy farm two. We have got the pig farm, sheep farm, uh, and then we've got the BGA and horse farm. And then we've got Kuma. Kuma's an interesting one. We'll get to that later on. I'll explain a little bit more about that. But we start here at that farmhouse is where we start. And we're just going to go up the road to the animal dealer, then we're going to whiz down and start here where most of our machinery is. But that also isn't your start farm. Your start farm and farmhouse is down here. As far as what do we start with on new farmer, because I always do my tours on new farmer, if I click on this, we don't start with any land at all, which is unusual. I don't, I'm trying to think of another map I've come across where on new farmer you don't actually start with any land. That being said, land is dirt cheap on this map, including the farm areas too. We'll start with the biogas plant, because the biogas plant I always think is quite important to know how much that costs. 8,282 for the biogas plant, which also incorporates a silo and the uh, horse farm. We can buy the periphery of the map. That will cost you 752, and it does take in some grass areas around the edges. It is probably one of the more pricey properties on the map. Uh, we have got a farm up there for 1,114. That one, uh, let me just get it right. That's the pigs, isn't it? No, what was that one? Yeah, that's the pig farm. Uh, we've got pig farm there. We've got dairy farm one, which is 4,107. Dairy farm two, 3,765. We've got the sheep farm, which is 6,919. Field prices, 26 grand for field 58, which is one of the larger ones. So you can pick up quite a few fields and get yourself going fairly quickly, which is also a very nice feature of the map. like that a lot. Sell points, I've tried to... Um, I've tried to change them over using the French to English dictionary. And, yeah, we'll see. We have got um, some patate, which are, uh, comes out as 100 potatoes. That's your potato and sugar beet. We'll get to all of these later on. I'll explain what they all are. Now, as far as slot count goes, on New Farmer, we've used 754 out of 1,299 which is fairly high considering it's a fairly small map, but we can get that slot count down. Don't worry about that. So what we'll do, we are up the road, and just here, we've got the livestock market. There are quite a few roads that crisscross the map in different directions. Now, the other thing I've come across, and again, another one of the reasons why I said I'm a little bit, I'm not sure, we've got a lot of these things come up. Missing shop item XML. There's XML files missing that tells you what they all are some are some aren't so i think it may well need an update now there are kind of hedges sort of there's large bushes and things that go around the edge of some of the fields i think that gives that a very natural feel rather than it being a kind of set 
you know, you get those kind of, this is a section of hedge, and you've got section after section after section all kind of laid one of the other. It, it does give it a nice feel. The tracks in places do seem a little bit steep, like it hasn't been, I say it hasn't been landscaped properly. I suppose in the real world you are going to have places where it's going to be like that. So as we head down the hill, we're coming to Dairy Farm 1. Now this is where all the farm machinery is, all the equipment is. We've got a few buildings, shelters, and this is where the first dairy um, building is. This one will hold 150 animals. And our trigger is down this end for putting the animals in. Which it will allow me to do, even though I don't own the property. We do have a bunker silo, just round to the side there. And what we'll do while we're here, because most of the equipment's here, and we're going to grab a tractor from here, we'll look at what we start with with regard to starting equipment. We'll also look at the modded buildings, and we'll go from there. So, if we go into this menu and go to Garage, we start with two Fent Favorit 511Cs, a Fiat 1300 DT, a TX32, <coughs> excuse me, New Holland Harvester, the HW80 Fortress Trailer, the header for the TX32. We've got Cultivator, Cedar, some weights. Then we move on to the modded buildings. And that's what you'll see. Missing name, husbandry, Cal Italy, it says there, which we're in France. So it's a puzzling one. Last ho large horse paddock, pig enclosure, and then sheep as well. We've got grain silo, small multi-fruit silo, silos, uh, bunker silos, silage pits. What's happening today? We've got the Kuma. Now that's actually like a... Well, it pays you. So when you buy it, it pays out to you. We've got that shelter. And the slot counts on these are pretty high. Then we've got the farmhouse, which is 45 slots. All of that you start with on New Farmer. If you come onto this on Farm Manager, or start from scratch, the slot count drops down to 665 out of 1299. You don't have any of the vehicles, but you do still have all of the buildings. Now, you can sell them. They're all here in the mods, so you can place them again and put them somewhere else if you want to. They can all be sold. And if you want to get your slot count right down, you can sell everything. And the slot count drops down to 488. So you can get it all the way down to 488. So for an area like this, you'll still have these shelters, but you won't have the dairy barn. You won't have the silo there either. And when we go around all the other farms, the actual animal pens will all be missing if you do that. But you can get the slot count down to 488 by doing that. So what we're going to do is grab... ...one of the tractors. Now each of the farms, as far as I can tell, all have a workshop. There is a workshop trigger just there. So as we go around, we'll have a look at those. We'll head... Uh, which way do I need to go from here? I think it's this way. Now onto the main road. I really hope I'm not getting another cold. It certainly feels like it today. I have to make sure I go on the correct side of the road. There we go. So, we're heading southeast down the map to Dairy Farm 2, the main farmhouse. Now, don't get me wrong, the main farmhouse is 45 slots, but the detail in the farmhouse is amazing. There's some really cool features, and again, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm kind of torn. I really like. I like the terrain, I like the colour palette, I like the textures, that's the way we want to go. I like a lot of the features and stuff on it, but as we as we go around I'll show you a couple of things that make you go, oh. I wouldn't say unfinished, that's the wrong way of putting it. So the second of the dairy farms, so that second dairy farm building which is in the, in the store menu as a mod, will hold 200 cows. Now I haven't shown you on the last one where all the triggers are. It's one of those ones they're not all as obvious as you might think. That's where you got your uh, load or unload. 
you've got feed troughs, uh, you've got, where's the water trough? Now, I'm assuming that's milk, but it could be a water point. I haven't, obviously, set these all up yet. Oh, it's milk this end. I know we've got a slurry pit this end and a manure pit. Slurry pit is there. Manure, as far as I can tell, the manure's going to come out there. The thing is with all these, I do get a lot of people often message and say, you didn't show the feed triggers, or where are the feed triggers? The feed triggers, hay, straw, whatever it's going to be for the animals, they're going to be located in or around the particular building that's being used. Sometimes they might be out in a field, you might get a water trough in a field. Sometimes they don't always work, so it's all well and good me showing them, but they don't always work every single time. So, farmhouse, garage does open like so there is a workshop trigger over in that shelter and this is the farmhouse and it's really nice one of the features i really liked about this was this bit here you come in here look at that that's amazing the rear door does open but to get in we need to go in through this door <laughs> not that one i can't believe it Oh, there we go. Just had to get the right angle. Little washroom before you go into the farmhouse. This is really fancy. What I like as well, being a model collector as well, we've got a Siku telehandler model on the side there, which I think is a really nice feature. We've got a little office in here with some more models on the shelves. Computer and stuff set up, ready to go. Upstairs is where the actual sleep trigger is. You need to go upstairs and round to, I think it's this room here, if I recall correctly. That's where your sleep trigger comes up. You don't have to have this farmhouse. You can get rid of this farmhouse and put another one in. Or a building with a, a doormat, or, you know, it's entirely up to you. But what is another nice feature is over here, this says open gate. If I press open gate by pressing circle, it puts pizza on the table, up on the board there. And at the table here, so if you'll now have dinner, you can. If you close the gate, it will take a little while, then those will disappear. Like. So. That's the farmhouse. No, I won't get this one to work. Isn't that weird? There we go. So, that's Dairy Farm 2. From here, we're going to go back out. There's a lot of little tracks that dot about, and they, most of those little tracks will just lead to a field or will split to a couple of fields, which will lead me to show you something in a minute when we come back from the sawmill, which is a, a bit peculiar. It's another one of those reasons why I said, oh, okay. I'm not sure. And another one of those things is going to be about triggers. So, we come down to the sawmill here. If we go onto the map here, so we've come from the animal dealer down to that one there. We've followed that road along. Along to here, we've come up to Dairy Farm 2. Now we're here at the sawmill. So you've got sawmill, and that's that sort of cell point there. Then you've got Vent de Bois, which is a cell point for wood, or sale of wood. Now, the sawmill one pops up here sale of wood is over here there's not one that actually says wood chips per se which I thought might be this here but there's nothing on the floor showing a trigger or anything which is a bit of an odd one but like I say if you go into the sell point menu this is one of the things a lot of people ask as well if you're new to the game if you're not sure about sell points, if you're doing a contract or you're doing something you don't know where you need to go, if you go across one to the sell points, you can go up and down using the D-pad and then you can tag the place. So if I tag the sawbill now by pressing triangle, oh, let's step back a little bit, let's do that again. It does that. So if you're not sure where a place is, it puts that huge column up into the air, so wherever you are on the map, you should be able to see it and aim towards it. So that's showing that as the sawmill sell point. And that's sell point for wood. So as far as wood chips go, it's going to be hereabouts. So from here, we're going to head northeast. No, we're not. 
So that's says southwest earlier. We came southeast, now we're going northwest. I'm having a cardinal point to miss that day. So, heading northwest. We come to this section here, which is really nice. I like the look of it, I like the way it's been done. But it's a peculiarity. So under the road, the road here, we've got a like a tunnel. So this is a bridge in essence, and you've got these tracks that lead to the fields, and I like that as a feature. I think that's really, really cool. But you can't get to it. There's no track that actually leads to that track, which is a bit odd. I thought the track there that leads off probably goes to the farm or some of like that. Weirdly, it just goes to another track. You'll see what I mean about the hedges. These are the hedges. But they're all kind of more bush than hedge, and I, I like that. If we follow this track along, this will take us to another couple of fields. One there, that one, I'm not sure where we get to. So that doesn't actually, that track doesn't actually take you anywhere. If we come back the other way, it takes us under the road to another couple of fields. So there's not actually anything that joins up to this. I know it's a small thing, but it's it's odd. It's that kind of, oh, okay. You just think one of these little bits of track just leading up to the road, maybe up to the side there, would have... I don't know. I don't know whether it's been, it's like I say, it might have just been missed, you know, in, in building a map. And I can imagine, you know, when you're putting everything together, I don't know what it's like when I'm doing stuff, and you think, oh, I'll go back and do that. And then it goes from there to there. But there's no actual way of getting... I, mean, I know you can drive across the fields, of course you can, but... I just thought it was worth pointing out. Anyway, carrying on. We do have off to our left, in a sort of almost like an old quarry, I guess. There's a lake. But we're heading, in a minute, we're going to be taking a left and we're going to be heading down towards the main store and another sell point. Again, my conversion over from French to English may not be right, and I don't think it is, it's very weird. That's the problem when you rely on things like Google Translate. I don't speak French fluently. So we do have some forestry here. The forestry is not expensive either, you can buy it in slightly large chunks. But unfortunately this is where we come to one of the points where I'm probably most... This is... yeah. How do I put this? One of the things that made me go, oh, okay, I'm really not sure I want to play on this map. And it's this. Now, I, I get it, have a key, which we kind of have on the main map you can draw up. But why would you put that there? Or maybe in the conversion over it wasn't supposed to be that big, maybe it was supposed to be down... But the, the actual area here is the same size as it. It's a bit peculiar. That. So even if you went to the full extent of running a fully realistic gameplay on it, that's a bit odd, to say the least. Dealership is here, so for buying your vehicles you can come on the side here you can repair them uh, customize them sell them and the reset point is also here so if you get anything stuck or whatever and need to reset you can reset it here which brings me to the next of the sell points which is tucked around behind now the sell point on the map says this one well La Latouche says the key again translation probably not right but this is Latouche this is the sell point Latouche which one was the part? Oh, that's probably the next one. So we go to Latouche. That's one of our main sell points. We can sell most of our cereal crops and crop types like so. And it's round the back. Where was it? Just there. There's your sell point. We can come right way back round. So that map's really frustrating. So every time I kind of look at it, it's like, ooh. So that's your store, one of the sell points. 
we're now going to continue on and around the map I suppose one of the other things and not all maps have to have it there's no there's not a, a, a circuit as such there is a kind of circuit that goes around the map there's a couple of the cell points and one of the farms you have to kind of go out to and then come back from which you'll see later on but you can also see as we're driving around why I'm kind of at odds with it the grass looks great the, the hedges look brilliant I, I like even look, looking around the edges of the map you've got the hills kind of going off in the distance when you get a little bit closer to them like on most maps it can look a little bit ropey in places but a lot of maps do but that looks really nice it kind of flows but then you have got a few little bits here and there so yeah I don't know which turn do I want I think it's the next one. Just coming up. Just here. The pig farm you will recognise as we approach. Well, you may recognise. I think it's the building from the old stream farm. But I like that. Again, it has a really nice, it fits this really, really well. Just coming in from the, the other sides compared to the old stream farm. But another workshop trigger just there. We do have, I think we can go in. Yeah, we've got a garage space. We've got a door that opens this side. There is a little bit of a hayloft above if you want to go into the hayloft. We can go into the house here. This one doesn't have a sleep trigger. It's just a, it's just a building that's here. You can go and have a look around there if you want to. Bit of racking space for pallets if you want. As we come through, we've got the rest of the buildings, shelter over there, and we've got the. This is the pig pen, isn't it? Or is this the sheep? I'm going to get this wrong, aren't I? This was the sheep, wasn't it? The sheep farm! Sorry, I do apologise. This is the sheep farm. The sheep farm will hold 120 sheep. Again, that is a modded one that can be removed. If you sell everything at the start and drop your slot count down, that will be missing. But the rest of the stuff around here will. That's the small multi-fruit silo. That will also be missing if you sell everything. But that's in the modded silos. That was down here. That one there, the small multi-fruit silo. 300,000 litre capacity. So we do start with that. it looks nice it fits and each of the yards there's plenty of room as well for maneuvering vehicles around i'm not sure about placeables that's the only thing is how good the ground is again it's almost impossible when you do a map tour to check every bit of land to see whether or not you can place something on it and you can bet the one bit you don't check is the place that someone messages so oh, i couldn't get any, anything to place on that bit so so this is just a look, you know, this is a look at the map. I'll show you where things are, and you kind of get a feel for it. So from here, we're going to head towards, I'll try and get it right this time, biogas plant. I'm sure it's the biogas plant next. Yeah, because the fib pig farm is northeast. That's why. We want the next turning on the right, which is this one here. So the biogas plant is where the second silo is and the horse stable, horse farm. We should be overtaken on the bend. You see what I mean about the kind of the undulations and the landscape? It's nice, the signs on the tight bend, it's, you know. Where's the turning? So, here, yeah, it doesn't have a gate, it doesn't have a gate, yeah. Here's the biogas plant, which again, it's not too expensive to buy. We do have two silage clamps, bunker silos covered, just here. We have the cell point. 
which does have a ramp whether or not you can tip because that's still fairly high maybe you can it's probably one of the reasons why there is a ramp but it does make it a little bit easier for getting up to it your digestate tank is there so your byproduct of anything you sell at the biogas plant when you do buy the biogas plant it is a regular biogas plant it takes your regular things it doesn't take wood chips or potatoes or sugar beet or anything like that it does just do your regular the regular things that most biogas plants take so the horse farm is just here with the second silo there a bit of shelter space another workshop trigger and we've got your um, horse stable horse pen pasture that will hold 16 horses Continuing on from here. So we're now pretty much up in the northwest corner of the map. So next on the cell points is this one here. So this one is the Leiteri Ferrabel and the Vont Derf Ferrabel. So you've got an egg cell point and the milk cell point are right here, right on top of each other at this little factory here. There you go. Nice and clearly marked. And from here we're going to head down to the Kuma, I think it is. I say Kuma, could be Suma. I think it's Kuma. So as we head down towards that, now I, I, spent, I spent ages looking online to find out what it was, what it actually meant. And apologies for the accent. It is the Cooperative d'Utilisation de Material Agricole. Basically, it's a cooperative for um, machinery. So in certain areas in France, and I think they did it in Canada as well, in, in uh, Quebec, I think, in those regions, where farmers couldn't afford to have certain machinery in an area, like buying a new harvester, or you know, it might be machinery for clearing ditches and drains and stuff like that. So they set up cooperatives, and the cooperative was set out to help with, I mean, these days I think it's for finances, it helps with all different things like that, but they would have machinery at the cooperative, the Kuma, so that all the farmers in the local area could come and use it. If it wasn't being used, they could come and grab whatever it was they needed to use. So it was set up by the farmers to be used for the farmers. So I think it's a brilliant idea, really, because, you know, another workshop here, which is a very cool idea, you know, because farming's not cheap and you know some of the machinery that you might only use once a year is expensive i think in re initially it was harvesters but then that sort of spread out to um other things and the machinery is joint owned by everybody but if you place this or at the moment when you've got it when you buy it it will pay out i think 600 is it 660 something like that on normal per hour but you could do it you could place a load of machinery here and have a central place where you come and collect everything if you wanted to go down that route but there you go that's the kuma so we have gone we should check the map we haven't checked the map for a while have we so we went from the sawmill up past the lake we didn't actually go and have a look at that it's like a quarry we can take that turning down around the side there's a big old lake in the middle there but we come down there and we went to uh, latouche and the store and that huge map up the hill to the sheep farm not the pig farm then we went out up to the biogas plant horse farm all the way along the road here to the milk and egg cell point then we come down here to kuma if you follow down that road it brings you back to the main road we went up again we already did the animal dealer we looked at that so what we're going to do now is come back up we'll go around and do the potato cell point we'll do the pig farm and then we'll come down and do these cell points here then we should be able to head back around to the main farm from there i think
So the question I guess you have to ask, and it's, it's again another reason why I'm probably so torn, is are the the little things that I've pointed out, and they are little things. To some people they may not be, they may be hard. Oh, that, that's the deal breaker. Are the things that I've pointed out enough to stop you playing on the map? No, absolutely not. Of course they aren't. You know, with the landscaping tool, that bit where I said about the road, you can put in your own bit of road. Of course you can. Um, that big sign, you know, it, how often are you going to go down to the store? And you can always look the other way if you get, you know, you don't necessarily want it. So, you can absolutely still play on this map. It's still a lovely map. It looks great. It has a really nice feel to it. A very natural feel to it, I think. So, pulling in here, we are at the potato and sugar beet sell point. Salt patat is just there. And then taking, I think it's here. This turning should take us to the pig farm. <clears throat> so. Now the pigs will only hold, I think it's 12, I think. Just from, from the list. Yeah, the pig farm, the pig pen that's modded that comes with the map, which again you can sell if you want to. That will only hold, hold 12 pigs. We've got feed troughs and water troughs and slurry pit. There's your point for buying, selling, loading or unloading. There is a workshop trigger. I think it's, it's in here. Yep, fuel. There you go. And workshop trigger inside. They're small plots, and there's not a lot on each of them, so it is almost that kind of, you know, you've got the basics here, but again, there's a lot of scope for a kind of build-your-own type thing. If you sell everything at the start, like I suggested, that barn there will go, and so will the pig pen, which just leaves you that shelter, which again gives you a bit of scope then to just say, okay, well, I can set my own farm up there of, of whatever I want, if you wanted to do that. So what we're going to do now is head back around... Because I need to come down the next road over. So we're going to come from here because it's not actually a track that leads from here down to where I want to go. So I'm going to back up to the main road, past Sant Patat, and then we can come back down here. Uh, yeah, that's all right. I want to go. So I'll see you in a minute when we're heading down there. So I'm now heading south, down past Field 48, on that side. Apologies to anyone who is French or French Canadian, especially Ray. Ray, the French Canadian. I'd really do apologise. <laughs> so, if we turn here, we've got some buildings either. I think they must be renovated. And there's another building up, up here that looks a little bit more derelict. But this is <laughs> Leclerc Alain. The Woolen Key is what it translated to. But this is your wool cell point just here. Tucked off to the side of the road. And from here... This was Lapin. No, Lapin, sorry. So Lapin is the second of the main cell points, I think, isn't it? Let's go across one. Yeah, Le Pat is the second of the main sell points. So all the others are pretty specialist. Uh, the potato one will do potatoes and sugar beet. Uh, Le Clair Hélène will do your wool and cotton. Uh, Later E will do milk. The sawmill will do your wood. Vendeuf, Ferrabel will do your eggs. And then Vous avez son bal. Now that translated to, you have 100 balls, not bales. But I think it may be bales. It was probably the translation. 
Um, that's here as well, I think, where we are now, and that's a bale sell point, as you can see down the bottom, in orange. So, the sell point is through there. And the bale sell point... Oh, that's interesting. Where's the bale one? So the problem is they're right on top of each other. I may have to do the uh, thing again. Right, let's just double check that tag place. Oh, there we go. Right there is where it's saying the bale sell point is. So they are right on top of each other. You've got one of the sell points just here for Le Pas, and then you've got the bale sell point just there. It's weird how the egg and milk one was cl clearly labelled. Up on the side of the building, eggs, milk. Um, and like for this one, for the bales, there's not really anything on the ground. There's not even a bale by the side or anything that says to you, look, this is where you can sell your bales. But there you go. So there you go. That is, I think, is the last of the sale points. I'm pretty sure it's the last of the sale points. Come back over here and there should be a little track we can take. Where was it? This one here. should bring us back into the yard of the Dairy Farm 1. There we go. Bit of luck that worked out. And there we have it. That is the Angevin Countryside by Farmer Angevin. Take from it what you will. If you take from it just, you know, again, like I said earlier, are the things that I pointed out that are, you know, and they are minor things that I think with an update, a little bit of tweaking, not a problem. You can absolutely play this map and play it really well. It is really very, very nice indeed. You can get the slot count right down as well. So if you look at it it's off the start and go, oh, 754, can't play on that. You can get that right down as well. Land is cheap. Um, you know, it's a nice map. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching